Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mondal. Welcome to English 314 Online. This is the Module 4 Lecture 2 video, and this lecture is covering providing feedback on close reading. I'd like to begin by quickly just giving you a recap of what close reading is. Remember that close reading is a method of literary analysis. And by analysis, I mean that close reading explores the deeper meaning of the text. Exploring the deeper meaning of the text is not the same as summarizing a text, right? When you're exploring the deeper meaning, you're really looking at specific words and phrases. You're looking for uh, kind of the, the deeper significance of how something is worded, how the author writes something. A summary is just kind of explaining surface level what's actually being said uh, quite literally by the text. So summary and analysis are not the same thing. An analysis is also not a general opinion about the text. When you're doing a close reading, you're actually quoting and unpacking the quotations, whereas general opinions about the text, you're not quoting anything. You're just kind of saying what you think about it. So that is not close reading. And analysis is also not social or historical context about the text. Social and historical context is important. It is relevant. Uh, it's necessary to provide that oftentimes for readers, but it is not the same thing as analyzing the text and does not substitute for an analysis. So basically to sum up, close reading must be connected to quoted material and close reading involves unpacking specific words and phrases from a quotation and delving into their deeper meaning. And you actually had an example of close reading in your last lecture, the module four uh, lecture one video I actually showed you the different steps to do a close reading. And then you had that sample paragraph of analysis where you saw what it looks like uh, to actually unpack the deeper meaning of specific words and phrases in a quote quotation. So the things that I just told you about that are not analysis, summary, opinion, and social historical context, you can sort of use those things as a guide to make sure that when you are asked to write an analysis, you have actually done an analysis. So these are three questions that you can ask yourself just to check and see if you've actually done a close reading. First of all, is this something someone would know just by reading the text? And if someone would already know everything you're saying just by having read the book, you're probably summarizing rather than analyzing. Explaining what a quotation says is not the same as analyzing the quotation. The second thing you can ask yourself is, is this something that tells me about the context of the quotation without actually digging into the quotation itself? In other words, if you're talking about sort of historical issues and social issues, but you haven't actually unpacked the quoted material, what you've done is provided context rather than analysis. And I want to reiterate, context is important. I'm absolutely not telling you to leave context out. I'm simply saying that when your goal is to do a close reading, make sure that you're not only giving context without the analysis. And finally, you can ask, are these thoughts interpreting the deeper meaning of specific words and phrases in the quotation, or am I just providing my general thoughts about the text? And if you're just sort of giving your general thoughts, you're not really guiding your reader through how you got there. You're not explaining the quotations that you're analyzing. Um, so you want to avoid just kind of giving an opinion as opposed to actually analyzing something and justifying your reading of the text uh, by providing quotations and an explanation of how you are uh, coming to your conclusions through analysis. So now that I've introduced you to three common uh, mistakes, basically, that people make when they're trying to do a close reading, they're trying to do a close reading, but they are actually summarizing or they're actually just giving context or they're actually just giving an opinion. Um, I want to share a little bit about the format of this lecture, which is actually organized according to those three errors. And the goal of this lecture, remember, is to model for you how to give feedback on a close reading because you will be doing this uh, for your uh, partner for discussion board number five. Um, so I'm going to, for each of those three categories that I just uh, explained to you, I'm going to give you an example to show you. Um, this is one of the mistakes that you can make with close reading. Here's an example of that mistake. Then I'll show you what unacceptable feedback would be in response to that mistake. And then I'll show you what acceptable feedback would be. And I'm going to go ahead and use this lecture to show you what a revision 
would look like too, so that you can see what the original close reading looks like and you can see what the revised close reading looks like as well. Let's get going with our first example. So in this example, the person writes, Jojo confides, quote, I follow Pop out of the house, try to keep my back straight, my shoulders even as a hanger. That's how Pop walks, end quote. And this is from page one. He is trying to let the reader know that he's going with Pop wherever he is going and seeking an erect posture because this is how his grandfather walks. So I've asked you what's wrong with this example. And the thing that doesn't work about this example is that the sentence that follows the quotation is basically telling you what the quotation says. It's not actually analyzing the quotation. It is summarizing the quotation. And it's actually redundant. If you read the quotation, you already know what the sentence is telling you. There's, it's unnecessary to simply kind of repeat things and say, oh, when he follows Pop, that means that he's trying to go where Pop is going. That's already obvious from my follow Pop, right? Um, and he's trying to keep an erect posture because that's how his grandfather walks. We already know that from the quotation. Um, so the thing that doesn't work with this is that it's not actually close reading. It's merely restating what is already obvious from the quotation. So a piece of feedback that someone could write in response to this would be dig into the quote more. However, this is not very helpful feedback. And I've asked you what's wrong with this feedback. And if you go back to the initial training that we did when you were writing your mini paper, you know that this feedback does not work um, because it's not very specific. When you say dig into the quote more, there's no suggestion of what parts of the quotation might be promising. There are no thoughts that this person could follow up on in terms of, oh, this might be a deeper meaning that I need to explore further. Um, and so that is not helpful feedback at all to have someone write, dig into the quote more. It's like, OK, what part of the quotation were you thinking? What ideas do you have? Um, if someone was struggling to write a close reading of this quotation, this would really be unhelpful feedback. Um, so instead of that, I want to show you what helpful feedback would be like on the next slide. So here we've got the same uh, text. I've showed you the original of what the person wrote in the paper. I've showed you the unhelpful feedback. Better feedback would be something like this. The sentence following your quotation simply restates what is already evident from the quotation. Rather than restating, examine the deeper meaning of specific words and phrases. I'm wondering what might be significant about the fact that Jojo is so eager to follow his grandfather and also what the hanger might symbolize. What's the purpose of a hanger and how would that be applicable here? Also, this is in the first paragraph of the novel and he's referring to his grandfather as Pop and readers don't know their relationship yet. Why do you think this is important? And some of you might remember this. Some of you may have thought that Pop was his father when you read this paragraph and then later realized that that was not the case. So. Um, this has some really good ideas, right? This person has clearly looked at this quotation, looked at where it is in the novel, and they're not writing things for their partner, which as you know, you can't do anyway, right? You can't copy what your partner tells you would be a good idea to put in your paper because that would be plagiarism. You know that from the academic integrity exam. This person hasn't tried to like rewrite things for their partner. Instead, they've asked some thought-provoking questions. They've been like, hey, the hanger's a symbol. How does a hanger work? Why, that might, why might that be important here? Um, so these are the kinds of things that help your partner to dig deeper into the quotation. And instead of just saying dig into the quotation more, it's actually modeling the thought process of what that would look like. So if the writer were to revise, and they were to follow that extremely helpful feedback, they might write something like this. Jojo's statement, and I'm reading what's in red here, Jojo's statement, quote, I follow Pop out of the house, seems at first glance to merely advance the plot of the novel. Jojo is going to the same place his grandfather goes. However, Ward leads the reader to understand in what comes next that Jojo seeks to, quote, follow Pop, not just literally, but on a much deeper level. The elements of posture and gait that Jojo mentions, the back straight, shoulders even as a hanger, denote pride and order. 
A hanger is a sturdy frame upon which clothes can be hung to avoid wrinkles and keep their shape, later worn proudly in the world as well-kept garments. Similarly, Jojo's even shoulders symbolize a deeper framework of moral integrity which supports his identity so that he can navigate the world proudly without the wrinkles of serious defects in character. Jojo's simple follow-up that this is, quote, how Pop walks, indicates that how Pop navigates the world and the character with which he does it is emulated by Jojo. The reader is not yet aware that Pop is not Jojo's father, but his grandfather. The extent to which Jojo emulates Pop makes their relationship even more significant when the reader learns of Jojo's absent father, who Jojo describes later as leaving him to go to a place where Jojo cannot follow. So I've asked what works better about this revised version. Um, one thing I want to point out is that I did cite something on page 10 here, and that was an example of how you can incorporate context into a close reading. Because for the reader to fully understand the significance of Jojo and Pop's relationship, even though on page one the reader of the novel doesn't yet know that Pop is the grandfather, you want your reader to know that. You want your reader to understand that, hey, this is the grandfather, this is significant, because it should shows that the father is absent, right? And so this person has incorporated other details from the novel to help contextualize their analysis. So I wanted to point out that I have done that and that you should also do that when and if it is appropriate. Um, but you can also see that there's actual close reading here, right? The sentences that follow the quotations do not merely restate what is in the quotation, but actually unpack and analyze. And here the writer has taken their writing workshop partner's suggestions very seriously in terms of really reflecting on the importance of the hanger as a structure upon which to drape clothing that's then worn into the world, um, and also to, to reflect on the, the relationship between Pop and Jojo. So you can see that when you have really specific feedback, the person is able to do a really good revision. If all you have is dig into the quote more, it might be difficult for that person, right, to come up with this kind of very strong revision for their close reading. Um, so I want to highlight how essential your role is as a peer reviewer um, and how important your feedback would be for the person to be able to revise effectively. So here's another example. Uh, of what somebody might write in a paper that would need revision. So example number two, when Leone leaves Jojo home alone, she is completely self-centered and it shows what a terrible mother she is. She is responsible for her son, so when he gets injured, it is her fault. It is clear that her neglect causes his injury as if she had been there, as if she had been there, excuse me, she could have been watching him. It is so unfair that Jojo had to grow up this way with an unfit mother who was more interested in having fun or getting high than in her own son. Jojo's description of how he got hurt is heartbreaking and shows how terrible Leonie is. What's wrong with this example? Um, I want to clarify that I'm not, I'm not saying that this person is wrong to have this opinion. We all have opinions of things that we read or experience in the world. So I'm not like your opinion is bad. What I'm trying to, to point out here is what's quote wrong with this example is it's not a close reading, right? It's an interesting opinion. Some of you may agree with it, but this is not close reading because it's not actually unpacking the text. There are no quotations. There is no uh, kind of showing the reader what the deeper meaning of specific words and phrases might be. So if somebody were to give feedback on this, let me show you an example first of weak feedback. So feedback that would not really be helpful would be good ideas, but analyze more. I think you're supposed to have quotations. Okay, that's true. <laughs> you are supposed to have quotations in a close reading, and they do need to analyze more. But once again, it kind of leaves the writer on their own in terms of how they can use their existing ideas to create a close reading. Um, so this is too vague to be helpful. And again, it's a little insulting to get something like this back because it's almost like the person barely read it, right? You're the workshop partner has not engaged any of their ideas. And this person actually has really strong ideas about this. They have very strong opinions. So for someone to just kind of toss back a generic, need more quotes, analyze more, it's like they, they have not really engaged your work. So this is very disappointing and, and unhelpful feedback. So now we're going to do the same kind of routine here where I've given you the original that the writer uh, wrote in the first draft. I've showed you the unhelpful feedback. Now I'd like to show you the helpful feedback. So this would be really, really good feedback. 
Close reading should unpack the deeper meaning of specific words and phrases in a quotation, so you need to integrate quoted material into your analysis. I think you're onto something really important when you express your outrage as a reader at Leone's absence and that she is responsible for Jojo's injury. What is it about the way Ward writes this that leads you to have that response as a reader? For example, is it significant that the moment he steps on the lid, He's looking up so that he can hear the sounds of tires if someone finally comes home. I'm also interested in what you make of the end of the passage. Usually when a child gets hurt, if there's an adult nearby, the adult will comfort the child. Here, his comfort is what he senses the animals feel towards him. How does that connect with what you're saying about the impression the reader gets of Leone? Wow, we got something here, right? This person went back to the discussion board instructions, figured out what passage the person was responding to, and it, it, there's one clear uh, candidate here, right? Because there were limited options, so you can kind of figure out, okay, they were responding to the one where he steps on the lid uh, when the only leaves him home alone. Um, and remember, he, he goes outside because he hears stag, his uncle stag, and he thinks Stag has this kind of really erratic behavior and he doesn't feel safe around Stag, so he runs out back and that's where he is here, right? So this person has actually gone back and looked at the passage and thought, huh, how can I get this person to move from opinion to analysis? Let me start with where they are and you can tell this person is really trying to engage the writer's ideas, right? They're really trying to engage. Okay, you had this response, that's valid. Let's figure out how to turn it into a close reading. And then they cite specific parts, by cite I mean refer to specific parts of the passage that the writer could also talk about. And notice they're not actually writing the analysis for them. They're not saying you should write this but they're more asking, what do you think about this? Maybe that's, that's a good place for analysis. So this would be extremely helpful uh, if you were to get this in a, in a workshop. So now I'd like to show you, if you got that really good feedback, how would you revise? And the stuff that I'm about to show you, what's in red on this slide, it might be difficult to arrive at this if all you got was, I think you need quotations, analyze more. You get this because somebody helped you develop your ideas. So let's look at the uh, revision. This is in red. When Jojo describes, quote, moving from pen to pen and using the sun to keep track of, quote, how long Leonie had been gone, how long Mam and Pap were, Pop were gone, how soon I could expect them to come back so I could go inside the house, it becomes clear that he does not feel that his own house is safe without the presence of either his mother or grandparents. The reason for this is that his uncle Stag has come to the house and Jojo clearly feels unsafe due to Stag's erratic behavior. Jojo's movement from one pen to another feels claustrophobic as he moves from one small confined space to the next over and over, his mind constantly on how much time has gone by. These exact confining measures of the animals in the pen, of the seconds and minutes that have gone by, contrast against the sun and the open outdoor setting, making the reader feel even more acutely how trapped he is. Jojo may be outside, but there is no freedom in this. Ward furthers this contrast between seeming freedom and the fact that Jojo is not free in the moment of his injury. He is walking with his, quote, head tilted up to the sky, but he is doing this so that he knows when someone's car comes back to the house. It is at this moment that he steps on a lid from a can on the ground, the pain so great that he falls down. Whereas normally adults comfort children when they are hurt, Jojo has only what he imagines the animals to say, and in his mind they express what he cannot because no one is there to hear him. Quote, let me go, great tooth, spare me. Jojo's begging to be spared in his mind, lying on the ground in pain with no one to hear him, cements for the reader a harsh judgment against the mother who would allow this to happen to her child. What works better about the revised version? This person really took the feedback to heart, right? When, when they were asked by their workshop partner, how did Ward write this to make you feel this way? This person was like, I got a list, right? <laughs> this person was like, let me tell you the way that Ward wrote this that made me feel this way. The claustrophobia, right? The contrast between being outside should be free and yet he's trapped because you know, he's afraid of his uncle and he's waiting for one of the other adults to come. And so you can see the way that they actually develop this analysis now. And this is very different from the original, right? Where they're just kind of giving their opinion 
Virginia, now we actually have an analysis that demonstrates how Ward develops sympathy for Jojo um, and some really condemnation of Leone as a mother. So now we have our third example. So this is something that somebody might write in a paper. When Pop tells Jojo that he had never worked, quote, sun up to sun down, like he did in the Parchman cotton field, he is referring to the fact that prisons like Parchman essentially continued to work African-Americans like slaves using the legal loophole of imprisoning them for minor legal infractions. So here I have this note, and I know I've, I've said this a few times already, but basically I'm, I'm just reiterating, historical and social context is not bad. This is excellent context. And if you were putting this in a paper, you would include a citation that actually mentions Parchman's history. And there are plenty of sources um, that, that you can find that document this that we will talk about in later lectures. So I'll introduce you to some of those materials in later lectures. Um, so this is good context, but it doesn't work as a close reading. Giving your reader historical and social context is qualitatively a different task than giving them a close reading. They're different things. So this is very successful in terms of giving the reader context. The only thing that would make it more successful is a citation uh, from a source that discusses this, but it's not a, a literary analysis. So I wanna show you um, what the weak feedback would look like, what the strong feedback would look like, and then I'll show you how you would revise this to make it a close reading. So this would be weak feedback good job, analyze the quotation more. <laughs> I'm sure by now you see a pattern in my examples of weak feedback, right? It's too vague. There are no ideas given about how the quotation could be analyzed further. And good job, it's like, what's been done well here? If there's no close reading, this person might mean good historical context, but you need to actually analyze the quotation. Here are some ideas, right? So this feedback is again, not helpful, does not actually engage with what the person wrote. So let's look at an example of good feedback. Someone could write, this is important historical context, but it's not analyzing the quotation. Why does it matter that Pop describes such a long work day? In the original passage, he mentions that he was not used to working that way previously. Why might that be significant? Elaborate. Again, as in the previous example, this person actually went back to the text. They looked at the passage that this person was supposed to be analyzing and threw in a few ideas. And again, they didn't actually write the close reading for their partner. They asked thought provoking questions to try to get their partner to delve a bit deeper into the passage. This is extremely helpful. If you got that really helpful feedback, there are some ways that you could revise. And on this slide, I've included the original uh, that the person may have written, and then I've included the revision so you can really see how that feedback would help somebody to come up with uh, a more complex uh, and, and appropriate analysis. So I'm reading the text in red here. Pop's description of life at Parchman implicitly exposes the insidious nature of the prison where African-Americans were made to work in the fields, unduly harsh punishments for petty crimes. Ward's development of Pop's narrative generates sympathy for Pop and dispels racist stereotypes of African-Americans as somehow deserving of such punishment. Although Pop is, quote, convicted of harboring a fugitive, readers know that he merely happened to be at home when his brother Stagg went back there after a scuffle with some white men at a bar. The serious nature of, quote, harboring, which indicates an intent to hide someone, contrasts starkly against a young man who was at his own home when his brother arrived there. Pop also identifies himself as a normal, hardworking person who was overwhelmed by the kind of work demanded of him at Parchman. This shift in work signals the shift from free man to what amounts to being a slave. Ward highlights the injustice of Parchman's treatment of prisoners by using language reminiscent of enslavement, working, quote, sun up to sun down in a, quote, cotton field in the intense heat. Not only does Pop work like a slave, but his body breaks down as well as his, quote, hands thickened up and my feet crushed and bled. These bodily responses signal the shift from a normal workload for a free human being to the bodily wounds borne by the enslaved. Parchman, Pop story reveals, is a plantation, and he had been made a slave there through entirely legal means. 
that his forced labor was legal sketches for the reader the contours of a culture of white supremacy that permeated the region. Notice where this ends. Wow, <laughs> right? This person went from, oh, Parchman was this prison and this is what people would do to the way that Ward writes Parchman for us through Pop's narrative helps us understand the culture of white supremacy that oppressed African Americans in this region. That's a pretty deep and rich insight, right? And, and you can see how they got there. They got there by focusing on the author's technique and doing a literary analysis instead of just commenting on, oh, here's the historical context of this, right? And you can see how this is directly guided by the feedback. Um, so I, I'm just really kind of lingering on this to show you how essential, absolutely essential good feedback is, how absolutely transformative it is to have someone engage with your writing and give you specific ideas. Um, the other thing I want to mention is like the other examples, I tried to incorporate context. So here I talked a little bit about what happened at the bar that led Stag to be pursued. And something else that this person could incorporate here is keep in mind that police did not go to the house to find stag these were the navy men these were like regular people who were at the bar who rounded up stag and pop and said you guys are going to parchment they basically served as police officers and judge and jury and you know sentencing these people and being like well you did this to us so we're going to come get you and tie you up and take you to jail um and so this person, the end of their paragraph leaves the perfect entry point for them to maybe analyze that section, right, where everybody was rounded up and, and sent to jail and to say, you know, evidence of this culture of white supremacy is the fact that there was no actual legal uh, proceeding and, you know, that, that sort of thing. So one thing that I wanted to highlight is, A, the incorporation of context from elsewhere in the novel to help the reader better understand the analysis that, that is written here. But also that, you know, when you do a really deep, close reading, it's going to lead to other insights about other parts of the text, which is going to be really helpful for your paper. Whereas if all you write is here's some historical context about this passage, it's not going to lead you to other ideas necessarily uh, and other things to write about. So what I have done is I have uh, hopefully modeled for you in a helpful way, really two things. I've kind of showed you, hey, remember how to give good feedback. Here are some examples of good feedback. But I've also showed you here are some ways to revise your close reading and make it stronger. Um, and I hope that that helped you to really kind of think about uh, the purpose of giving, giving good feedback and what it can help somebody else achieve. Um, and as you will see when you go into the module four a folder on Blackboard, there are some instructions for going back to the discussion board um, and giving a colleague some feedback on the close reading that they did. Uh, and the next assignment will be for them to revise according to your feedback. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.